A little Ice Age study reveals the North Atlantic reached a tipping point. Now, scientists have used centuries-old clamshells to see how the North Atlantic climate system reached a tipping point before the Little Ice Age. Now, if you're not familiar, the Little Ice Age is a period of regional cooling, especially in the North Atlantic, that lasted for centuries, ending in about 1850. And as you can see here from the graph, it began around 1400 after a sea ice anomaly. Now, a long-standing theory suggests initial cooling in this period was sustained by sea ice to ocean feedbacks. Sea ice expanded, and this slowed ocean currents, which in turn reduced the flow of warm water from the south, which we've been discussing on this channel, the shutdown of the AMOC. Now, a new study by the University of Exeter used the shells of quahog clams, which can live for several hundred years, to understand how the ocean has evolved and responded to external changes over recent centuries. And the findings show that the North Atlantic climate system destabilized and lost resilience, or the ability to recover from external changes, prior to the Little Ice Age. And you can see that in the gray barred area here with that sea and ice anomaly and a rapid growing of sea ice. But we'll get to my idea at the end after we cover the paper. So, the findings show that the North Atlantic climate system destabilized and lost resilience prior to the Little Ice Age, possibly causing it to tip into a new, colder state. And the researchers say the North Atlantic could be approaching a new tipping point now with major consequences for the region's climate. And the region in question is Europe or the entire Northern Hemisphere, for that matter. Now, scientists are warning that multiple tipping points may now be approaching worldwide and they're claiming it's due to human-driven climate change, but we all know it's just natural climate variability. Now, this study is trying to help understand when and how tipping points are triggered, but they're blaming it on you, which is stupid because they're using past triggers and tipping points which have nothing to do with the fake narrative of anthropogenic global warming. So it, it seems to be just a funding narrative here. Now, one way to tell that a system is approaching a sudden transition is that it becomes slow to respond to perturbations. And these are external changes that we're talking about. In other words, a system loses the ability to return to its average state and can instead tip into a new state. And in the case of the North Atlantic, prior to the Little Ice Age, this loss of resilience made the system vulnerable. And it was quite vulnerable, in fact, because it stayed cold for hundreds of years after the quote-unquote tipping point. And it was vulnerable to an abrupt switch, potentially heralding the transition to the Little Ice Age. The new study warns that vulnerability of the North Atlantic system is a crucial issue today with recent analysis suggesting it has destabilized during the last century and might be approaching a tipping point. Now, unfortunately, the team's latest analysis suggests that the system of ocean currents in the North Atlantic could be at risk of a tipping point again, and they say, because it's your fault. They blame it on global warming. And this is leading once again to an abrupt change of climate over Europe if the destabilization occurs. Now, analysis of clamshells focused on oxygen and carbon isotopes and as it related to shell growth, all of which can be used as measures of environmental variability. As you can see here uh, on the clam photo down below here, we have periods of small rings and then some big white rings. Now, these would be major climatic shifts in the decadal scale. So that's how we measure clams 
and they can be quite precise in um, recording environmental variability. Now, the paper published in the Journal of Nature Communications is titled Destabilization of the Subpolar North Atlantic Prior to the Little Ice Age. And we are going to link you with the entire paper for free below the video in the description box where you can take a look at all the data. Now, we did an expose on the shutdown of the AMOC and a new paper coming out is showing that, well, it was once thought that this fresh water comes over the north part of Greenland and enters the Atlantic this way, but that is not the case. The case is that it comes down through a, some small channels here in the Maritimes and down the coast here. And because of that, it has the ability to shut down the North Atlantic Current. So it follows down the coast through the Labrador Current, hits the North Atlantic Current or the AMOC, the Gulf Stream, whatever you want to call it, and shuts that down. And that wreaks havoc because it no longer brings the warmth and the warm water to Norway, to the UK, and to Europe. And that area gets very cold, very quick, and the ice begins to build. Hence the little ice age. And you can see here, we're just going to posit what is actually going on. This is very low sea ice for a long period of time, like we've seen over the last few decades. And then there's a rapid spike in increased sea ice. This is an influx in fresh water to the system while there's already probably fresh water in the Beaufort Gyre to begin with. And it is the melting, rapid melting of this massive influx of fresh water that causes the tipping point and then the long period of cold, which ends in more massive glaciation. But the initial period of cold for hundreds of years has very low sea ice. So sea ice is not an indicator of temperature in the Northern Hemisphere, according to this paper, which is a very important uh, piece of information for you to understand. The amount of sea ice we have has nothing to do with the temperature in the Northern Hemisphere. Even at low sea ice, you could be in a little ice age. The sea ice was, in fact, during the little ice age, lower than it was prior to that. That's mind-blowing. You can see here, this is the sea ice anomaly spike and then very low sea ice for a long period of time. Yet, the temperature remained cold. And that was due to the shutdown of the North Atlantic Current, the AMOC, or the Gulf Stream, whatever you want to call it. And so the tipping point has to do with freshwater influx. And now we have a huge amount of fresh water in the Beaufort Gyre, 20 times more than the last release back in the 1980s. And it is game on that if this amount of fresh water was able to release and move its way down the Labrador Current and hit the AMOC, well, that would be a boom to knowledge and the end of the empire, in my opinion. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't shared this with like-minded people. We're just covering one new paper. It's, uh, we added our opinion in it, and I hope you got something out of the video. Please share this with like-minded people, and stay tuned for more Boom.